first thing we'll do is make sure that our Indigo 500 is powered on. I can tell that this is powered on by the LED light here. The next thing we'll do is use a standard ethernet cable to connect between the transmitter here. And I have the other end plugged right into my computer because we're making a direct connection. Next, you'll go ahead and activate the web interface by pressing this blue button. And you'll see an LED light come on to show that the web interface is active. At that point, a static IP address has been set up for the Indigo 520, which defaults to 192.168.5.20. You can find all of this information in the manual. The next thing that we'll do is open up our settings from our computer, navigate to network and internet, and then ethernet. Open this up and we're going to assign an IP address. If you default to automatic DHCP, change that to manual and we'll use IPv4. So let's toggle this on. And then for the IP address, we're going to use something that's one digit off from the transmitter. So I'm going to use 192 168 5 21 and our transmitter was 20 so that's just one digit off you'll also be prompted for a subnet mask or subnet prefix length the subnet mask number would be 255.255.255.0 and the subnet prefix length would be 24 so that's what I'm being prompted for I'll enter that here and then working off of a Windows computer for the gateway, you'll want to enter 192.168.51. And we'll go ahead and hit save. Now that we have our network connection established, we'll go ahead and open up a browser and enter in the IP address 192.168.5.20 8443. Now you might get a certificate error, but we can go ahead and move past it. Upon first setup, you'll be prompted with an activation code, so there will be an extra step. But once it's been set up for the first time, you can go ahead and use the login you set up. And here is our web interface. There may be default parameters showing, but this is all configurable. That said, right now we're working on setting up our transmitter, so let's dive into that. This is our default measurements view, but I can navigate to outputs and relays and see that there is an output and a relay configured already from previous use. If you're opening your transmitter for the first time, None of this will be configured. Let's dive down here to output setup and set up another output. As you can see, our output one, which was already configured, is both toggled on, pulling from probe one, set to a humidity parameter with scaling. Let's say we want temperature on output two I'll toggle that on, tell it that I'm looking for probe one. If you're using an Indigo 520 transmitter with two probes, you'll see two probes as options. I'll select the parameter temperature, and I want to scale this to match a previous unit, which used scaling from 40 degrees C to 60 degrees C. You can also configure the error output and clipping limits here, though defaults will be shown. I'll go ahead and click apply. And now if I navigate back home, we can see our second output set up. Relays will work similarly. Let's dive in. Go to outputs relays. 
As you can see, I have one on, but we'll move over here and set up another relay. Toggle on, select your probe source, select your parameter. Let's say we want an alarm at 90% humidity. Activation win above limit because I want an alarm once I hit 90 or above. Limit value and then hysteresis. I'll say 2%. Go ahead and hit apply. And if I navigate back home into outputs and relays, I can confirm the second relay is set up. If you're using ethernet outputs, you will need to enable Modbus TCP IP. By default, this will be toggled off. So you can go ahead and turn it on and hit apply. This is all it takes to set up the basic outputs. That was all set up for analog outputs, relays, and Modbus, but of course, there are some other settings on the transmitter you might want to configure. Those can be found on the transmitter section, where we can enable temperature compensation, enable data logging, set a date and time, configure our network, update software, or assign custom output units. Once you've made all of your selections, you can disconnect the interface and your transmitter is ready for installation. All built on the reliability and accuracy of Vicelist sensor technology.